UK politics. David Cameron will hand over the keys to number 10 Downing Street to Theresa May within a few hours. The outgoing Prime Minister has said nothing to reporters as he left Downing Street on his way to Parliament today. Uh, he was expected to make a statement later uh, about what he sees as his legacy before he heads to Buckingham Palace to offer his resignation to the Queen. Now, Theresa May will follow him to the palace to be formally appointed as a successor, though she is expected to make her first speech as Prime Minister outside the famous Black Door in Downing Street, outlining her priorities for the new administration. Our new Prime Minister's first task will be to draw up a top team, including a cabinet minister, to take charge of Brexit. Now, that obviously is a new position that has just opened up. It is also expected that there will be an increase in the number of women in government when Theresa May comes into power. Meanwhile, the British Parliament today bid farewell to Prime Minister David Cameron in what was a lively session. Now, Cameron had a fierce exchange of words with the opposition leader, Jeremy Corbyn, and he did also make some candid confession. Here's that exchange. I'm told that there are lots of leadership roles out there at the moment. There's the England football team. There's Top Gear. There's even across the big pond a role that needs filling. Fascinating suggestions for future jobs. I think uh, most of which sound even harder than this one, but um, so I think I'll pass. I've often disagreed with him, but there are some of his achievements I really want to welcome and pay recognition to today. One is to helping to secure the release of Shakur Amir from Guantanamo Bay and legislating to achieve equal marriage within our society. Never forget the day, actually, in number 10, when one of the people who works very close to the front door said to me, uh, I'm not that interested in politics, uh, Mr Cameron, but because of something your lot have done, I'm able to marry the person I've loved all my life this weekend. And that was, uh, there are many amazing moments in this job, but that actually was one of my favourites. Too many people in too many places in Britain feel their economy has been destroyed in towns they're in because the industries have gone. There are levels of high unemployment or underemployment and a deep sense of malaise. Don't we all need to address that question? And to be accused of sloth in delivery by the right honourable gentleman, let's just take the last week we both have been having these leadership elections. We got on with it. We've had resignation, nomination, competition and coronation. They haven't even decided what the rules are yet. <laughs> If they ever got into power, it would take them about a year to work out who would sit where. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn! Democracy is an exciting and splendid thing, and I'm enjoying every moment of it. <laughs> the, Home Secretary, the Home Secretary, Mr Speaker, uh, I was talking of the economy. The Home Secretary, again, she said, many people find themselves exploited by unscrupulous bosses. I can't imagine who she's referring to. But um, I have to say, I'm beginning to admire his tenacity. Uh, he is reminding me of the Black Knight in Monty Python's Holy Grail. <laughs> He's been kicked so many times, but he says, keep going, it's only a flesh wound. I admire that. Could I just put it on record and wish him well as he leaves this office and also to wish his family well, Samantha and their children, because I think we should all recognise that whilst many of us really do our in enjoy our jobs and our political life, it's the loved ones nearest to us and our families that actually make enormous sacrifices that we may be able to do this. So I'd also like him to pass on my thanks to his mum for her advice about ties and suits and songs. <laughs> She's extremely, it's extremely kind of her, and I'd be grateful if he'd pass that on to her personally. I will certainly send my, his good wishes back to my mother. She's, he seems to have taken her advice and is looking absolutely splendid today. But it gives me, it gives me the opportunity to put a rumour uh, to, to rest as well, even more serious than the Strictly Come Dancing one. And he'll appreciate this because El Gato, his cat, is particularly famous. And the rumour that somehow I don't love Larry. I do. And I have <laughs> photographic evidence to prove it. Um, sadly, I can't take Larry with me. He belongs to the house and the staff love him very much, as do I.